there's something we all enjoy about staying for dinner. You ever thought why? What was on your dinner table when you were younger? Chances are it had a lot to do with what your doctor was telling you was healthy. Building a strong, healthy body is like building a strong, beautiful building. If the foundation is weak, the whole building will be weak. It takes five fingers to point the way to healthful eating habits. Well, here we go. For years, the government published dietary guidelines meant to keep Americans healthy. There's a great deal to learn. Tell me what you eat and I'll tell you what you are, huh? The body needs certain substances to live and grow. And remember, your body isn't just like an automobile. For years, the key message of those guidelines was the same. Cut fat from your diet. The committee's original report urged Americans to reduce their risk of heart attacks by reducing their intake of cholesterol, down to the equivalent of about one egg a day. And those guidelines had an effect. From 1977 to 2012, per capita consumption of eggs fell by 9%, beef by 37%, whole milk by 72%. Calories from saturated fat fell, while calories from supposedly safe carbohydrates increased. As one expert put it, it was a vast nutritional experiment. But with nearly a million Americans a year dropping dead from heart disease in the mid-80s, we had to try something. Nearly four decades later, the results are in. The experiment was a failure. Americans are sicker than they've ever been before. The prevalence of diabetes has gone up 157% from 1980 to 2011. Nearly one in 10 Americans now has the disease, costing the public health system $245 billion a year. Heart disease is still the number one killer in the country, and Americans are as obese as ever. So what went wrong? Good old granola. Great for taste, but loaded with fat. It doesn't take much of an imaginative leap to assume that fat would make us fat, that it would clog our arteries and raise the risk of heart disease. But it turns out that saturated fat is a lot more complicated than we think. Carbohydrates and fats are nutrients. Like man, you need nutrients to live and grow. Firstly, there are two kinds of cholesterol. LDL, which is linked to heart disease, and HDL, which can be protective. Fats that course through the blood are known as triglycerides, and high levels of those are linked to heart disease. Saturated fat raises LDL cholesterol, but also raises HDL, removing LDL buildup on arterial walls. So raising both can make saturated fat a cardio wash. One key piece of information is that LDL seems to come in two forms, large and fluffy, and small and dense. Those smaller particles are linked to heart disease, while the larger ones are mostly benign. Saturated fat increases the number of large particles, but the opposite happens with carbs. I don't get it. Researchers have long since discovered the kind of fats found in olives and in fish like salmon are actually heart protective. And now it turns out that the fats found in meat and dairy aren't as bad as we feared before. So that means by focusing so much on fats, we may actually have been making ourselves sicker. So she brings up the subject of reduced fat cheese. It's a fat-free Newton. Fat-free cholesterol-free. Low-fat granola. Reduced fat kettle chips. Reduced fat chips ahoy. Low-fat cottage cheese. Non-fat yogurt is a perfect example. The thinking for consumers was simple. Fat was dangerous, this product had no fat, therefore it must be healthy. It's non-fat, which means less calories. But amid the confusion about fat, we ended up replacing it in our diets with sugars and carbohydrates, which meant our calorie intake was actually going up. When carbs from things like corn and white bread are ingested into your body, they're converted into sugars. Those sugars convert to insulin, which causes fat cells to go into storage overdrive, leading to weight gain. Since fewer calories are then left to fuel the body, we begin to feel hungry, even as our metabolism begins to slow down in an effort to save energy. We eat more, and we gain more weight, never quite feeling full. As this process repeats, our cells become more resistant to insulin, which causes us to gain more weight, which only increases insulin resistance in a vicious circle. Cut calories, and people just get hungrier. Obesity, diabetes, high triglycerides, and low HDL cholesterol can all follow. Study after study has found that it's very difficult to lose weight on a very low-fat diet, possibly because fat and meat can produce a sense of satiety that's hard to achieve with carbs, making it easier to simply stop eating. But it isn't just the increase in carbs that affects us. These processed, low-saturated fat alternatives come loaded with sugars, salt, preservatives, and even some unhealthy fats. So what's the real alternative? 
As one extra puts it, the cold hard truth about diet is that the only way to eat well is to eat well. We'll be happier and we'll be healthier if we focus on real, whole foods, whether they have fat or not. Got it. And thanks, we'll never forget what we've learned.